This is SXK Arts, and we are here with John Bechtel. Uh, why don't you tell us uh, what you do in here? Say hello. Hello, everybody. Uh, I'm a keyboard programmer I'm here with Daryl Hell, and uh, we have known each other a long time and worked together uh, with abstinence. Uh, also, I'm the current keyboard player for Ministry. I've been with them since the Rio Grande Blood lineup, and uh, I played with Fear Factory as live keyboardist for many years, and uh, before that, Prong, uh, I was on the Cleansing record with uh, Paul Raven and Tommy and Ted, and uh, before that, Murder, Inc., with all of our Killing Joke cohorts and Chris Connolly, and then my... Uh, was the keyboard player for Killing Joke on the Extremities record uh, 1990 and 91 uh, that's when I first met Paul Raven and um, first started traveling the world and touring uh, I guess uh, around 1990 so uh, we uh, know that Paul recently passed um can you tell us some things about him that you know maybe people wouldn't have known well <clears throat> uh, yes I, I suppose it's just that uh, he knew so many people and in a lot of ways a lot of people really knew him and knew him well uh, you know he was very open character and uh, um, like I say he knew so many people and he was so outward that uh, really it was he wasn't a hard person to kind of get to know, but I suppose uh, he was maybe more sensitive and more sentient than people would think, I suppose. Uh, deep down, he was definitely a very uh, uh, amazing kind of personality um, that you might not just see uh, on the average meeting and, and hanging out with, but most people he met you know, always form some sort of bond with. So it was like a, you know, a very magnetic kind of personality. But uh, obviously, knowing him and traveling, being in so many different bands, and uh, over the years we we were quite close, and probably um, you know had a special relationship. You know, when you're in a band, uh, especially when you go through you know different bands together, uh, it's a uh, it's uh, it's quite an experience, and uh, it's like a brotherhood or some type of type of com camaraderie that you that you experience, and you help each other get through things, and you know you keep each other in company and and everything. Could you elaborate on that a little bit? Well, he was just an amazing guy. I mean, he was always uh, entertaining, and uh, you know, he'd always be laughing hysterically when you'd be hanging out with him. Uh, so it was. Uh, definitely a fun guy, but I did have one image of him from this last ministry tour that uh, was pretty hysterical. Uh, I was coming back from the tour bus, which was a few blocks away from the hotel, and, uh, you know, there's a lot of business people, tourist type of people, downtown Vancouver, and uh, just the type of metropolitan people that you'd expect, and then suddenly, as I looked further down the sidewalk I see this character coming towards me and uh, he had like a some type of wolf mask or something like a, maybe it was wasn't a wolf uh, I forget what it was he was always carrying it around he might have even had had on in some pictures it was like a hat or like a uh, wolverine or something I don't know what it was <laughs> this crazy animal hide that he was wearing and he also had this other, some type of hide that he had acquired somewhere. So he had these, this wolf head and this hide, and all of his kind of like worldly belongings. You know, he he, he never really traveled with a suitcase or, or anything. You know, he just always was carrying a lot of stuff with him. You know, so uh, it was pretty hilarious. He looked like almost like some kind of Neanderthal. You know, <laughs> maybe like a character out of a Capital One commercial or something. You know, that kind of contrast. Uh, and uh, I just remember 
laughing. And, uh, you know, it was a it was a pure raven moment <laughs> for sure. Uh, yeah, so that that image will always be ingrained in my mind for sure. But uh, uh, yeah, there's just so many moments uh, that uh, that I I keep thinking about or experiences. What was your first Killing Joke uh, experience with him? Well, I was he was um, maybe a week or two behind getting to rehearsals. Uh, his son Vincent was born that week, um, I believe, in Holland, and then uh, he uh, he came in, and so I had already been there working with Jazz and Jordy and Martin uh, for at least a week or maybe two weeks um, until Raven got arrived, and uh, right away it was a big. Difference. I mean, I was close to Martin, and that's how I got into the band. But uh, you know, I obviously had some kind of relationship with Jazz and Jordy. We had met, uh, and uh, uh, they eventually asked me to, you know, to be in the band and everything. Uh, and we had, even in that first week, some ups and downs. Was, you know, the first day was great, and you know, they were really excited about all the new sounds and ideas and, and my knowledge of the, you know, equipment, and modern technology, and uh, and then jazz was a little bit more like, kind of like, worried that I was, you know, not going to be able to learn all the songs in time, or be able to, you know, uh, cut it live, you know, whatever, I don't know, it can, you know, it's some kind of like, insecurity complex or something, so when Raven finally showed up, uh, I felt like somebody, you know, that I could kind of like, I don't know, he just had that kind of personality that I could uh, identify with, and he and I immediately started bonding. Probably my first memory was we went to the restroom and we're kind of standing in the urinals and <laughs> talking, and he was asking me, I guess, because, you know, I said how I was originally from Pennsylvania. He called me the woodsman. <laughs> <laughs> and I always thought that was pretty funny, and... uh uh, he was like the first one to kind of stick up for me, you know, uh, with jazz, you know, kind of trying to get jazz to just back off me a bit and to give me a, a chance, you know, to just go ahead and, and play and uh, and learn the parts, you know, because there was times he wouldn't even let me do it. He's like, no, you, know, you don't know it yet, so he would he would play it instead, you know, and then, and then I'd have to just watch him, but... Uh, um, Eventually, I would, you know, keep working and working and working on it until, you know, until I'd have it, and then he'd let me play it and everything. But Raven was always the one that was kind of like, give him a chance, or, you know, kind of like trying to get him to back off. He was pretty pretty brutal, you know. Mm. But uh, uh, I think right away, we, we formed a, a bond, for sure. All right on. Um, what would you like to have people remember him? Like, how would you like to have him remembered? Well, that's just the thing. I mean, he's the kind of guy that, uh, I mean, he I mean, obviously has met and touched so many people that, you know, uh, he will be remembered as he will be remembered by the people that, that knew him and were around him. But I suppose just uh, from my perspective... Uh, he was truly, you know, a, a social creature. He, he, I think, thrived on traveling and, and meeting new people and uh, new experiences. And, and uh, um, uh, just everywhere he went, he met people, talked to people, you know, bonded with, with people, and uh, people remembered him, you know, even years later. Uh, you know, I run into people um, on tour, you know, bus drivers or road roadies or technicians or you know, lighting people. Anybody that that had had known Raven always, you know, was like, "What's up with that guy?" You know, how you know this? You know, he had really obviously left his impression on them. Mm. So uh, yeah, he just probably that's his legacy, so to speak, was the number of people that he he had known and touched and humored and whatnot.